What's up guys, Evgeny Genchev here and this is Sweet Struggle. Today I'll be doing something new which is reacting to pianists in movies or uh, actors playing piano in movies or piano being played in movies, whatever, like you know what I mean. I hope you enjoy this. We're starting off with a movie called The Pianist. This is happening around the Second World War and is centered around the life of Ladislav Spielmann who is a Jewish Polish pianist. The role is being played by Adrian Brody who actually got an Oscar for this role and I think at the time he was the youngest actor to win an Oscar for their performance in a film. I don't think that has been beaten yet but if it has let me know down in the comments who it was and when it was. But now let's get to the scenes. Okay this one is the C sharp uh, Nocturne. Chopin. Concentration is key, yes. Oh, he's recording in the studio, that's cool. first impression from this is that it's quite impressive that he seems to be the one playing in this scene and what proves that to me is the fact that the shot moves directly from his hands to his face and also the fact that his face is quite focused uh, he's making sure that he's playing all the right notes that his fingers his hands are in the right place actually playing the piece for real what I find a little bit unusual for this is that he plays the trill with 1-3 on both black keys. It's not very conventional to play uh, with that fingering. People would rather play with 2nd and 3rd if it's both black keys, maybe 2nd and 4th. But uh, I guess in order to get it up to speed, uh, he wanted to use something that he can also involve a little bit the arm and feel a bit looser, especially if he is not a professional pianist and maybe the fingers are not as developed, then 1-3 makes sense. It's just not quite a conventional fingering, especially on the black keys, because you need to bring in the hand a little bit uh, into the keyboard rather than just using the longer fingers and just playing it with them. All right, next scene is already well into the film where He's locked up in his friend's flat and he's on a hideaway but there is a piano and he sits at it, although he's supposed to be really quiet. Uh, the temptation. He hasn't actually touched at this point piano for quite a while. So I, I feel him totally. Okay, this is actually a piece that is for solo piano, uh, but I think it's arranged here for orchestra and for, uh, for keyboard. In this scene, there are a couple of things that look a little bit out of order, uh, but 
first of all, let me say that it's not unusual for a pianist to just play the piano without actually making any sound. There is this kind of uh, thing called dry practice that you would do and it would be for many purposes, but um, mostly it would be for memory and also exercising articulation. I think the context of this scene, though, is uh, quite different because um, he is just sitting at the piano and he wants to kind of feel the energy of it because he hasn't played it for a very long time. So he's been deprived from the sensation of uh, making music, of uh, producing sound on, on an instrument. That is uh, quite sentimental, quite touching to see him that he just wants to like experience and be closer to the to the piano. What I would pick on though uh, as a practical thing is that his left hand uh, is uh, not exact. So, and what I mean by that is that uh, in the chords the fingers are grouped as one rather than actually forming for a particular chord as you would normally would if you're just doing this uh, dry practice or actually playing the piano uh, rather he just keeps it as a whole and just moves mostly from the wrist which is not very exact also if you notice at the end of the scene he is looking at the bottom of the keyboard rather than the top although he has a bit of a uh, run there a bit of a jump and normally if you're focusing your attention on what you're playing then your focus would be at the hand that has the more difficult part and uh, that is more demanding. Although this looks a little bit unnatural and it's something that I can pick on, uh, it can be also the artistic choice of the director so that there is not too much jerkiness but it's more of a subtle movement and it sets a particular atmosphere without too much extra rapid movement which totally makes sense. All right, the next scene is probably the most famous scene in the entire film. And even if you haven't watched the film, it's quite likely that you've actually seen this. You must be afraid to touch it even like it's been so long. Just, just this start, like first of all, imagine all these years you haven't touched it and this is the heart-wrenching uh, start of the first ballad by Chopin. This is quite amazing and I think it's very well recreated, um, the whole sensation, the whole atmosphere. I've had to play once uh, in minus temperature perform outside and that was at the New Year's concert. I could feel that even after 5-10 minutes literally my fingers were sticking to the keyboard. So you can imagine he hasn't played for such a long time, he is uh, cold, he hasn't warmed up obviously, uh, must be feeling really rough, hungry, tired and yet uh, he's playing and this is something that upfills him but at the same time it's an expression of his struggle so far it's uh, super expressive on a practical note though his fingering though is super unnatural and it doesn't look anything like you would normally do uh, and, the, and the start is not something that helps you with a phrase uh, but my only practical explanation for this would be okay he's not a professional pianist and on the other hand you know, if you're in his shoes and you haven't played for years on the piano, then you might lack the flexibility because of the cold, 
you may be taking an alternative fingering in order to be able to stretch because your hands are so stiff. I love how he stops in the middle and he's just like so emotional about it and he just hesitates a little bit. This is super expressive. Let's, let's move on. Alright, here you cannot see quite clearly the hands, obviously. Um, so I'm not sure he's quite on the on the money playing all the all the right notes, but it looks more or less within the same register. Uh, you can actually see how cold it is because you can actually see his breath. Probably it's not his hands. That was definitely not him. And, uh, I like, I like though the the fact that they're actually missing a few notes here and there. There's like. Either miss note or maybe a little bit of a uh, a wrong note, maybe a bit of a dirty note that you can actually feel that it's it's a natural performance. It's not a recording. Same thing here. They skipped. Uh, This was kept probably in the full scale, which is something like around 10 minutes or something. He would have probably had more sufficient time to warm up, but now it looks quite unnatural, but I understand the time limitation. But of course, I, after not having played for so long and being in so cold environment, on a cold piano, cold hands, he wouldn't have been playing like, like this on uh, these passages for sure. the right key and uh, place his hand on the on the necessary, necessary note because there was some jumps uh, there were some passages that you would normally it was the natural thing to look at them and uh, you can see that in he is more about the expression towards the camera which is obviously normal it's a it's a film but yeah it's just this extra layer that you would maybe see more of a dynamics in his expression rather than this sort of quiet subtlety but at the same time I understand though that they want to represent this kind of mood uh, which is more subtle and less dynamic after him be, having gone through the wall being tired all these heavy things that the music is very dynamic obviously it's very emotional but his face is already worn off from all uh, all the emotions that he has gone through all the fears all the scares He's just emotionally run down. All right, here he would definitely have been looking at uh, the left hand and he was rather looking there and then he went back although he was supposed to just keep his look in the same register. And here he wouldn't have looked that much down.
so cool. Here, I actually really like that it is uh, quite clear that the hand double, let's just presume there was for sure a hand double, uh, actually re recreated this um, jerkiness that we saw at the very beginning of the scene in the hands of uh, Adrian Brody. And it is the same way that uh, he tries to have that element in the movements of the hands. I think this is this is really cool. Also, you can hear in the last note there is this uh, kind of a little bit of a dirty note there. I think that's also cool because it sounds more organic, it sounds natural, it's not just a studio recording. Even if it's a studio recording, they've kept it with uh, some amount of inaccuracies so that actually it's more believable. I can definitely appreciate this. All right, now this is one of the last scenes from the film where he's in the studio again and recording the same piece that he did uh, at the very start of the film, which is the Nocturne in C-sharp minor from Chopin. The continuous shot again, you can tell it's him. can pick up as a detail from here first of all he is not quite following the the movement of his hands on the keyboard once after the first shot is done I think it's quite interesting to know that his hands have changed They're, they seem to be quite skinnier uh, at the end of the film than they were at the beginning which makes sense obviously because he has gone through a lot, he has lot of, lost a lot of weight, he's been starving through, throughout the war, hasn't been eating well at all. Alright guys, I really had fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed it and you could get something out of it. Leave a comment below if you would like to see me react on another film, TV show or a music video. Meanwhile, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon so you never miss a video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.